if you've ever entered on a 212 reversal and added and sold for a profit, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, folks. Thanks for joining us for another Friday webinar. I am your host, Ryan Faluna, and I have a very special guest for you here, Arturo Peralta. Uh, some people might know him as the Cabo Killer. That's the killer of trades, uh, mind you. He is joining us today. He is going to discuss how he uses the strat, how he got involved in trading, and how he got involved in strat trading as well. So thanks very much for joining us. Arturo, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, Ryan. Thank you very much. I can hear you. All right, great. Thanks for joining us today. The first thing I wanted to ask you here is tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you get involved in trading? And then how did you find the strat? Okay, well, um, I started trading options in 2015, mainly using technical indicators for day trading, as you know, BWAP and Fibonacci retracements, those were my, my favorite ones. And I had a very hard time knowing why sometimes I just got uh, chopped up um, more dirt in the trade because the direction of the market was erratic and had no trend. Uh, okay, later I found mother bar issues in the in Rob Smith's this trap, and I will go to it uh, shortly. But okay, back in 2018, I got to know the strat with some YouTube video and started learning it from Rob Smith. And suddenly everything started to make sense. I avoided trading inside bars, which is known as ranging. Mm -hmm. Uh, I began to spot very strong reversals uh, in minor time frames, like the 15er, uh, and I started applying it to options, like in the option charts, and combining it with the strat of universal truths. So um, I think that once you know when to enter and when to exit, which the strat uh, mainly gives you, uh, I think you have the major part of trading in your pocket. So well, for me, it's been a long road, but it's a very clar clarifying one. And uh, I'm glad to be here sharing this with you. Awesome. And, and I'm, I'm grateful too. The, uh, you know, one of the things about the strat for me is, is that as I started to learn it, and I'm, I still consider myself a novice, but as I started to learn it, I started to figure out when and I should enter and exit, much like you just said. And, yeah. and of course, there's nothing in the stock market. There's, there's no practice that's going to guarantee that you're going to find winners. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is putting the odds in your favor and making the smartest possible decision on entry or exit. And the strat makes it really, really simple. And you, in your opening there, you had mentioned two things that really stood out to me. You mentioned VWAP and you mentioned Fibonacci retracements. I draw Fibonacci retracements every single day. Uh, yeah. it, it's something that I've that I've learned. It's something that I've used, and and, and I understand. You know, there are, uh, the stock will sell down to a particular fib level. You'll take a position there, and then you just get chopped up, right? Because it turns out that you're still inside of the previous range. So that really stood out to me because I've experienced that myself many many times. So if, if that's something that you've experienced, or if that's something that you're familiar with. Uh, I suspect that you're really going to enjoy today's presentation. So, so let's go ahead and, and get right into it. Um, why don't you? I, I understand that you have a PowerPoint for us today. I have one. Yes. Um, let me try to share it. All right. Go ahead. Okay. So share screen, and there you go. All right. Awesome. Okay. Let me just get it big. Okay, so I will leave it this way just for change. Perfect. Yeah, I, I do this too. It's actually easier for me to see what's going on. So no problem. And um, and, and just for, for just a couple of administrative notes here before we actually begin the content. Yes, sure. this session will be recorded. In fact, everyone that registered will automatically get an email that has a link to the recording. That email probably won't happen till tomorrow or maybe even the day after. Uh, and the recording won't be available until later today. So if you miss that email, if you don't give it, you can always email me. You can tweet me. I'd be happy to, to, uh, to provide you the link to the replay. I will also tweet it in reply to my initial uh, tweet for this webinar. Um, now, I, Arturo, I can say that from some of the past webinars that I've done with Joe and with, uh, and with Jermaine, um, 
we got asked for the a copy of the PowerPoint. So if you wouldn't mind, sure. if you could email me this PowerPoint afterwards, uh, that way I can send it out to the people that that request it. So uh, just just wanted to take care of that. But whenever you're ready, go ahead. Okay, sure. So well, I'm, I'm, uh, I need to get, give credit first to Rob Smith because his it's his strategies, his work, and obviously I'm still learning from it, and I, I love it, and I must mention that. So. I will begin by saying what is the strategy in my own words. And I define it as a way of knowing where price direction is going based on quantifiable data, okay? And universal truths as inside bars, opening price, time frame continuity, and broader information. What um, that gives us is to, it's a result of simplifying trading by 100%. It makes things easy, just so simple. You don't need um, lagging indicators, and I say lagging with a little bit of, um, <laughs> well, forget about it. Well, well, no, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a really good point, and I think that we should mention that. Whenever you have an indicator that requires the price as one of its inputs, yeah. It's by nature going to be a lagging indicator because it cannot oh. com calculate a value without calculating the current price. So by the time that you get that value, that price may have changed. Uh, so, so your point about about lagging indicators is well taken, and and I think that you know. Um, it's one thing if you understand that the indicator is a little bit lagging and then you compensate for that, but it's quite another to learn other strategies that kind of just avoid the lag all to, all, uh, altogether. Uh, and you know, it took me like a year to uh, um, to begin to understand that they were lagging. I used to rely on Fibonacci retracements mm -hmm. all the time. Well, I had the broad information in front of me and I know where to gauge magnitude. I, I know where the, the price was going. So, well, I must respect uh, though the the technical indicators because then, well, okay, if you had a very good risk management, you can still make money with technical sure. indicators. But what if you know where price is going? No, okay. So I think I had a point there. You're relying on quantifiable data. So we say if stock X, Y, Z, do this, then we'll do that. And that's a, the beauty of this trend. So and, I th and the other thing about that, and I, I'm, again, I'm sorry to interrupt here, but you're, you're hitting on multiple lessons that I learned myself, so I feel compelled to add some color uh, to that. When you have a situation where if X is going to happen, then we do Y, you, you're doing yourself a tremendous service because you're turning that in almost into a mechanical process where yes. you're removing emotion or, or that, uh, you know, the problem with waiting is that you have too much time to think, right? So if, if you have a strategy where, okay, if this happens, then I'm going to do this. And if this, and, and then this, if you can follow that, you're going to remove emotion and you're going to lower the amount of mistakes that you've made. I know that happens happened to me. I've, I've talked to a lot of other people that that's happened to as well. And this is a great way to do that. I think we all, all traders go through that. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. So I have leveled up my trading based just in price action. I'm a, a fervorous follower of price action and quantifiable data. I really admire Rob Smith. I never thought I could... Um, come to know a strategy like this. And um, well, the strategy is based on the truth. That's the beauty of this, the truth. And I mean, quantifiable data you can see on the chart and follow it. So, okay, well, let's begin um, with the scenarios. I know perhaps um, the strats holder and Joe has already gone through this, but I'll, I'll make it very briefly for people that maybe hasn't um, uh, attended that, those webinars. So just quickly, the strat scenarios are three. One is an inside bar, which means neither side of the previous bar range is taken out. Okay. The second scenario is a continuation. One side of the previous bar gets claimed and surpassed. Okay. And the third scenario is an outside bar, which is the famous broad information on um, the lower time frame. okay? 
In this scenario, both sides of the previous bar gets taken out. And that's it. The strat scenario is simple and easy as one, two, three. Okay, here they are. One, inside bar. This inside and the previous bar range. Okay, a continuation is flying either, either way up or either way down. Okay, and number three, it's an outside bar. So both sides of the previous bar gets uh, taken out. Okay, so now we have um, three universal truths, as you all know. Or, uh, there are more uh, universal truths like the open price, but well, mainly for execution and, and, and this webinar, I will focus on uh, inside bars, full time frame continuity, and broader informations, as I told you. And uh, I will also uh, highlight the importance of the four C's of time frame continuity, which you are told in the link for the webinar. I think that's very important to, uh, to, to get it very clearly or clear, uh, because you that way you know where the stock is going. So uh, just briefly, actionable signals, when I say that, is uh, a pattern, a candlestick pattern, known as a hammer or a shooter. We mainly use this hammer or shooters or inside as inside bars, okay? Because um, just the hammer and the shooter alone is not considered a universal truth because we can know why it formed. Germain uh, has gone through this in his, his webinar, and well, we we know this. We know uh, we don't know how, why sellers win this war and why buyers won this one because we haven't applied full time frame continuity or we haven't applied uh, the broader information as price discovery. We will go through this, but when you add up these universal truths, then you got the full throttle to enter the trade. Okay, so for actionable signals, the, the universal truths must be an inside bar formed like an actionable signal. At least that is uh, how I take the trades and I rely the most on those trades because uh, an inside bar means you have an equilibrium. And one, uh, once the equilibrium is broken, either side to the upside or to the downside, then you know price is moving and someone is winning the war between buyers and sellers. Okay. So uh, this is as for actionable signals. We are also have the bullish or bearish kicking patterns, which uh, are very well known patterns. This can the importance of this pattern is that they tend to change time frame continuity and. Um, even Rob have a gappers list that is intended to spot changes in time frame continuity, which um, I don't personally use. When I started learning from Rob, uh, he told us one very valuable lesson to narrow our universe to just a few stocks to follow and to learn. I, in my personal experience, I narrow my universe to Tesla, Tesla stock. And I begin to know Tesla. Like so, mine. so, so you, so let me, let me just, let me just stop you right there. You just trade one stock. You just trade Tesla. Yes. That's, that's Tesla. absolutely awesome. So a couple of things, I know a couple of people that I follow on Twitter that are not uh, strat traders that do the same thing. They only trade Tesla because Tesla provides the move, all the movement that they need in order to execute yes. their strategy. So I think it's, I think it's, it's, cool that you were able to find the exact same thing using an entirely different strategy. Tesla just seems to be the name that serves everybody. And, and uh, on another point, um, I really like Rob's point of narrowing your focus. That's something that really resonated with me too, because when I was starting in this, even before I got to the strat, I would try to trade anytime I would see a hammer or a doji, I would try to act on that. And I realized that everything's a little bit different. And if I focused my energy on, on stock 
sex that I understood or had some type of experience with, I inevitably did better. So by adopting the same thing for the strat, it makes total sense, right? You, you learn your process, learn what you're going to do if this happens and that happens, and then narrow your focus down into something that you can that you can actionably watch every day that you understand. I think that's super cool. I, I why te, why Tesla? I mean, is it is it just because Tesla gives you everything you need, or you like well, the car? I can think of two reasons. One is the the range of Tesla, the average two range of Teslas. Uh, enormous. It's a yep. <laughs> uh, Tesla can travel forty dollars a per session or more. Yep. You know, and when Tesla starts going, you better prepare for that those reversals because you can really make money. You can lose ten times in a row short positions, but when once Tesla gets to fly, you will recover that and more. You can make your whole year of trading with Tesla. So That's really cool. um, I can think of that, and also because. Uh, yeah. Even while the contracts, the, the option contracts of Tesla tend to be very, very expensive because of volatility and, uh, and, and people tend to buy insurance for protecting their, their positions. Um, you can find some good Vega, I mean, Vega contracts that will have a lot of value even for day trading. So. I find Tesla to be a, a, a gold mine. Yeah, if you if you know how to write it, because if you got chopped in the wrong side of Tesla, you will get more there. Yeah, <laughs> I gotcha. Okay. So, um, what's next? We well, I'll get to enter for, for full time frame continuity, and I will take a little time, around ten minutes, explaining this because I this is my. The most important to me is full time frame continuity. You can rely on this. I have taken so many trades based on full time frame continuity, even trades that are. I missed the entry point at the highest part of the, the actionable signal, and I got to enter on a, on a retracement. And just relying on the full time frame continuity of the stock, uh, you can spec it to keep going. Um, well, I have taken several trades like that and um, were very, very gratifying. So full time frame continuity, we will discuss here the time frame participation groups, um, like the monthly participation groups, the weekly ones, the daily and the 60. Rob said, says to uh, focus mainly or at least on four participation groups, the, the month, the week, the, the day, and the 60. If you can do more, that's way better. Uh, for example, the yearly and the quarterly, which I have them in my screens. I, for, like for, I only look for Tesla, so I have everything, uh, every time frame opened up, even the three minute bars. <laughs> so I, at the universal truth opening price, Confer, uh, confirm, control, change, and conflict, the four C's that I told you, the importance of uncoupling, uh, event continuity, I just will mention it because it's when news comes up and those news affect the direction of the stock. It's a very simple as that. And then combining the actionable signals with full time for continuity and, and broader information and spotting natural buyers and sellers with this. Okay, so the first thing that I want to ask you about this slide is let's really quickly cover those four C's and just kind of define them. Confirm, okay. is this something like when a two uh, or, or a bar becomes a two, right? When an inside bar becomes a two, it, does that confirm your trade? Oh, I see. You have a slide for it. I was jumping ahead. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but we can go through that if you want. Yeah, let's do it. Ready. Okay, so the four C's of time frame continuity. Yeah. You, you got to make yourself some questions when you enter a trade. You got to ask yourself first, is my trade or uh, is this uh, exact point where I'm entering the trade is confirming another participation group? Um, that being said, okay, you enter your trade on the 15er and you start seeing that it keeps going, 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 and that affected the 30 time frame mm -hmm. and then the 60. And it is uh, confirming the, the previous trend. So that's what I mean by confirm. Gotcha. One of the, the, 
uh, the four C's of time frame continuity. It's, it's a little bit simple, but you must always have it present while you're trading. I think we, I, I used to forget it when I was starting, and once I learned it the hard way, I begin to have uh, very good returns. So, um, uh, do you want me to go through the four C's or should I? Yeah, I, I, I just wanted to kind of define them. I see that you were going to do that here, but I think maybe we should just kind of define them real quick and then go back to the full time frame continuity. Sure. Okay. Well, like for full time frame continuity, uh, the importance of this is because we need to know the level of aggression of buyers and sellers. We need to gouge the, the, the potential of the movement of the move. So, like, um, if you have you have full bullish full time frame continuity, you must at least focus on the sixty, the daily, the weekly, and the monthly, and the last sale must be higher than the opening of monthly, weekly, daily, and sixty in order to consider bullish time frame continuity, and is the opposite for bearish time frame continuity. Okay. The last sale being lower than the opening of the monthly, weekly, weekly, daily, and 60. Why is this an, a universal truth? Though? Why is this a quantifiable data? Because no one can dispute that all participants are in one side of the trade, buying or selling. Here, this is the truth. It represents when all participation groups are confirming each other and are in control. You know that the 60, the 60 bar is um, a way to know who's in control right now. So I think, for example, Todd Ostendorf, at Strader, mm -hmm. in his trading, he always is uh, monitoring the 64 uh, various various sectors, and I I think that's very good because you know where the market is heading at that exact moment. Okay. So one of the of the C's is conflict. And I need to go through this before we enter fully to the four times, the, the four C's. Okay. Because any time that one or two candles are different color, like in the, in, the, in the description, the price is considered to be in conflict. And this was the main reason why I, I got chopped, chopped up a lot using technical indicators. I never, never, never checked the highest time frames. And so when I got a, a mother bar, which we'll, we'll mention uh, briefly, the, the price does not have a very clear direction. We don't, we don't have a strong trend and it's making ranges. So you enter the position and there you, you, you can have your actionable signal there and enter at the top of the hammer, for example. But since you, you, you have not um, time from continuing either to the upside or downside, you will get more there. there. There's no direction. And this is a very important, at least for me, it was a very super, super, super important part of trading. Uh, so, so we should avoid conflict, conflicting stocks when trading. Okay. Mm -hmm. Intraday time frame continuity is very important and it gets importanter when we have periods of high volatility, like um Extreme volatility. We we got extreme volatility. We can look for the fiber, the the and even the one minute candlestick charts to look for potential reversals. Uh, when we got a very quiet market, for example, it is enough to look at the sixty and the daily, and you can rely on that data to open trades. Uh, that being said, now. We will, I will enter fully to the four C's of continuity, which I have mentioned some. Control. You got to ask yourself which participation groups are in control of the direction of the price. Well, that's one of the C's and the main C. Okay, sorry. So I confirm. Are all participation groups confirming each other? Are they going in the same, same direction? You got to answer that. Then, if you have conflict, do you have it? And then you should avoid it and change. Does that conflict will end up in a change of a trend? Are the participation groups changing the continuity of the other participation groups? 
Okay. So applying the four C's, we always need to establish which participation groups are in control and for how long. And here the the importance of uncoupling, I don't know if you already heard that uh, term for like the strap. I think it's very, very important. Uh, like when Rob uh, rings the triangle for Harambe or something like that. He's had me do that now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, in, okay. In this case, the monthly represents the institutional group, the largest uh, group which are buying or selling through a period of one month, okay? The daily, who is in control in the date of today? And the 60, who is in control right now? The 60 is happening intraday. So right now, who's taking control or who's having the most of it while in the session of trading? Okay, so when the 60 and the daily are confirming, they override the week and month for control. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay, so this is the importance of the flip, as it will either continue to confirm the daily for control or change control back to the 60 minute. Weekly and monthly groups should those three be the same direction, okay? So that 60 bar is really important. Most, uh, a lot of people that are uh, starting with the strat me included, when I was starting, I always tend to open positions without waiting for the first 60 to form. Uh, that's a big mistake. You, well, there are traders like uh, James Bradley, which is a ninja trader and trades uh, one minute candlesticks just at the opening. But that's, that requires a very serious and tremendous ability to trade. He's a very experienced trader. But if you wait the 60, the first 60 minute bar, you know where the spread, the price of the stock is going. So you can enter either on a retracement or, or in momentum with an, a momentum actionable signal. Okay. That was a very hard lesson to learn for me. I want to share with you. Always try to wait for the first 60 to form before entering a trade. And I could repeat it twice just to get it very hard to your mind. Uh, any other combination will leave only the 60 minute in control as the others are too conflicted. If you have conflict, well, I recommend if you're starting out to not take the trade, just wait patiently. I tend to wait um, a lot like a fisherman waiting for the, the right uh, fish to come when trading Tesla. Tesla uh, not always or not daily Every day gives you the, the exact uh, entry uh, or the exact reversal you're looking for. You need to wait. You can take trades when Tesla is inside a previous bar, but that requires a very developed ability to trade, uh, like uh, broader informations mm -hmm. and to know price discovery method. So I would strongly suggest that if you're starting out with uh, the strat, you focus on the first 60 and whatever outcomes um, it gives, you take the trade before that. Okay. Uh, the weekly group reconfirmed or negates the monthly and is reconfirmed by the daily and 60 minute groups throughout the week. Um, there's uh, the importance of the uncoupling that comes because you need to look and every Monday, which a uh, week starts, or depending on the ending of the week, the uncoupling is the first time during any month where the opening prices of the four major time frames occur at different times. All right? On any Monday, the daily and weekly opening prices are the same. That makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. uh, new bars are starting out after the weekend. And during the first hour on Tuesday, the opening prices of the 60 group and daily group are the same. Thus, the earliest of an uncoupling can occur the second hour of trading on Tuesday. Hmm. Okay, the, that's clear. Yep. Sure. This means that we gain more quantitative evidence of in which to gauge the probability of our trades based on the separation of the participation groups. Okay, 
So we get to know the level of aggressions of, of, of aggression of buyers and sellers by the uncoupling. Okay. And that's the importance of the, I think, when uh, Rob rings the bell for Harambe. <laughs> That's amazing. You, you know, th th it's funny because Rob has told me essentially the same thing. And I, actually, a couple of others have said the same thing, but they've never really said it just like that. And it, it's almost as if a light bulb just went off in my head for me. The, the earliest that an uncoupling can occur is the second hour of trading on Tuesday because the daily is and the weekly are going to be the same on Monday. Right. And same with the hourly. And then, and then after that first hour, I mean, that, that's a really good way of saying it. I have not heard it that clear, but that, that's like a, a light bulb moment right there for me. Oh, so, so that's, I appreciate that. I can appreciate that quite a bit. And, and, I'll, and I'll be honest, trading on Monday, as far back as I can remember in my career, trading on Monday has been a crapshoot, for lack of a better word. Some days yeah. I'm able to do it, okay other days i'm just like man this week is rough I, and then and then hopefully it clears up throughout the course of the week this might be one of the reasons for that this is pr pretty okay. pretty straightforward here this is awesome okay thank you that doesn't mean you can't trade until tuesday you know but you until tuesday you get to know the level of aggression of, of, of institutional buyers and sellers and other participation groups you can take trades obviously but well the uncoupling ha happens uh, for example if the last day of the month is between Friday and Sunday, uncoupling doesn't occur until the second hour of trading on the following Tuesday. And if the month ends any other day, okay, the uncoupling occurs the second hour of the following day. Not always, okay, just to make sure. So here are some examples of full time frame continuity down. This is uh, Tesla trading as of today. Just forget about the trend lines. Mm -hmm. We got here on the, this is the quarter. He's going down. The month is going down. The week is going down. Also the daily. And the first hour of today, it was a scenario tree going down also. So we have full time for it to continue to do the downside. Um, there's no reason to believe this is going up right now. Mm -hmm. But well, it's Tesla. It is very erratic. So you have to be very, very quick. As I mentioned earlier, you got to spot the reversals on the lower time frames just to that they to confirm or to get out of that trade. You must be very quickly and very careful just for Tesla. Okay. Uh, for the upside, I got Expedia. This is a very clear example. If everything is going up. You got full time to the upside, quarter, the monthly, the weekly, the daily, and the, the 60. All everything is going up. So you can have this uh, this quantifiable data as a hint of why you should enter this trade. Okay, we know this is going up. Okay, and since this is going up, I can enter just based on a actionable signal. And if I got a relevant information, well, then I, I know where this is heading and where I should uh, exit. So the reason why I left Fibon, Fibonacci is, is because once you had your triangle, for example, and I'm going to try to draw here. Uh, let me see, form, for example, you can draw it here. Any series of higher highs and lower lows, mm -hmm. triangle work. Okay, this is just for educational purposes. Um, let's see another one. There's, there's a problem information. So, <clears throat> one of the reasons I left Philos was because I used to draw the Fibonacci and the Fibonacci tells you certain levels in which you should uh, take profits. But with broader information, you have that too. You got exhaustion risk here at the top and exhaustion, well, obviously the downside too. But once you get here, you can, uh, you can take a decision of just lowering your position or if it expands to the upside, you can add. Uh, in my personal 
trading experience, I, when it reaches the top, I tend to exit the position because options don't work the same way as the stock. Options uh, lost value over time, theta, time decay, and options always get affected by volatility. So you, when you have an, uh, I will enter into this uh, in a what, just in a moment, but I just want to explain the reasons why I left uh, these technical indicators as Fibonacci's. You got everything here with price uh, price action. Uh, at least for me, it has worked. It was worked a lot. And also, when you're drawing these broader informations, for example, on the weekly, you have a, mo uh, a, mo a, a, a scenario tree in other time frame. So uh, you can gouge the magnitude by looking at that, for example, this tree mother box. Is in, uh, sorry, this tree scenario, you can have a target here. And you can know this will eventually claim this level and exit this as a target. And after this, you can uh, start looking for reclaiming this upper level. So that is the same with Fibonacci. With Fibonacci, you also have those levels. And I might assume that the, the Fibos might get to those levels too, because it's based on an extension of the price. Okay, so that being said, <laughs> I will enter now for broader information. This topic. Okay, we will. I will cover briefly how price discovery works, how to draw the triangles as broader information on a higher time level, and here is basically explained in a one-hour chart. We have a series of higher highs on a series of lower lows. Um, at the beginning of the trading session, <clears throat> it uh, quickly make a scenario tree, if you can see. So you got to take out the previous bar range. Uh, this, told, this tells us that buyers are willing to buy and sellers are willing to sell, okay? But once you knew you have drawn your triangle here and it reached this point you knew exhaustion could come and then try to expand to the other side of the triangle so this is how price discovery works in a series of broadening informations down up down up down up and you can rely on these beautiful trend lines as i have done it i have uh, like three years now trading this this way. I know well, other traders have more time, but in my personal experience, this is like magic. So I, I got a couple of really quick questions here on the broadening sure. information. There, there, there's. I always get questions about this, so I might as well just go ahead and ask them. Uh, one of our viewers today is asking: Do you consider extended hours, pre-market and after-hour bars, when drawing your broadening formations on the sixty-minute chart? So, do you ever consider the extended sessions? Yes, I do. Uh, when you're trading intraday, you can consider them as price discovery works on everything that trades everything. So when I'm trading with options, I use, uh, for example, the, the option chart. I, I, I look at the, at, the, at the stock, but I use the option chart. I will go through that in, just in a moment. But I, I tell this because, uh, yes, you can look at pre-market and, and look at broader information in pre-market. Those will be either expanded or stay ranging for an inside date. Okay. And then one of the other questions that we had, this was actually emailed ahead of time. Uh, Patricia was asking, you know, I always struggle with drawing the trend lines to see if a formation is broadening. Do you have any tips on actually drawing the different lines? Yeah, it, uh, it actually shall be very simple. It, um, you just look for a series of higher highs. For example, here you have a high, then you have a high here. You draw it from your recent uh, candlestick to the, the back to this point, okay? And the same for the lower part. You draw it from the, the, the last candlestick, the last lower low to the last low, this, this point, okay? It shouldn't be that uh, strict or it's just for visual uh, confirmation or visual purposes. It's, it doesn't have to be strict. 
you know? Okay. And, and I think one of the important things to realize here, so looking at the drawing that you have right here, the, the, it's very easy to see the broadening formation. It okay. seems to me that what's important to take away from this drawing is that the broadening formation happens after this bar right? So here is when your broadening formation is actually starting. So the fact that these lines intersect back here, that doesn't mean anything, right? You're, you're just drawing from yeah. this point right here to this point right here. And then you're doing the same thing at these points down here. And, and that formation that ends up being formed, this is your broadening formation. So the stuff that's behind this bar right here doesn't really matter much. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, that, that's totally true. And you also have another broader information up to this part. This is a higher high and this is uh, lower lows. You can draw it to here and know that this will eventually can, can become uh, resistance or support. No. Um, and so, and so let's carry that, let's carry that thought forward a little bit. Cause I think that's a really good point. So let's say you do draw that broad. I did a, I did a really poor job with my blue lines here. So please forgive me, but let's no. say for, let's okay. say for example, that this two continues to go in force and actually pushes above this level right here. Mm -hmm. If by having both of those broadening formations drawn, we know now that one of the next targets might be right up around here, right? We can deduce that from these formations that we found. And you can use that as a target and a, a exit point, yes. The, probably the way I should trade it is waiting for this to expand, to come here, back here, and then to uh, reclaim the upper level. Okay, so so I, I'm sorry I cleared the drawing away a little too quickly there. Uh -oh. If we have that drawing in here, you're waiting for this to happen, then come back down here and test and then go, right? That's because that's probably the price discovery that we're going to get. We're not just going to get a straight shot right up to the top of that first formation. You got that. Yeah, got it. So Patricia, anyway, I, I hope that helps. Uh, I, I hope that that tip helps. That's that's actually a really great explanation. Appreciate that. Oh yeah, that's a um, a question I used to have too. This is a, when when you're beginning to learn this track, you're very concerned about drawing these triangles. Yep. Yep. But after you start trading the strat, you get to realize that it's, it's not the importance is not that you have very, very, very strict points or the the triangle is very well drawn. It's just for visual ranges and for you to know where you can exit and where you can put your stop. Okay? Gotcha. Yes. We tend to look for expansion of broadening informations in when you're using options in, well, at least what I do, I I don't do spreads or calendars or that, uh, those kind of options. I just do naked, naked call, naked puts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of my recommendations, uh, not a trading advice or something like that, just a recommendation of my trade experience is that you try to catch the, the retracement and exit when the, the reversal is going back into another retracement because always, price always travels like that. It goes up, then it retraces, it goes up, it retraces. So when you're trading options, you might catch it. long run, not waiting until it gets to the moon. We don't even know that that's going to happen. Gotcha. So how apply these track to options? Very briefly. Well, any doubts and, and questions you'd like to? Uh, no, we, we did. Run? We did just cover them here. We, I had a cut. Let me just really quickly go through the question, the, uh, things that were asked. Does your first 60 uh, minute begin at 10 a.m. or 10.30 a.m.? 
Okay, if you use think or swim, I use it mostly. Uh, I don't know how some like for trading view or trade station or interactive brokers or or platforms, but you can choose an option that says start aggregations as, as market opens, and uh, that way you can ensure that you your candlestick are starting at the bottom of the hour. Okay, so that being said, the, the candlestick would start at 9.30, is time. I don't know if that answers the question, but... Sorry, I was, uh, sorry, I was actually just typing a response there. Uh, I think that that should answer the question. Here's another one. Following today's Tesla example, what would be your plan? Would you, go, would you look to short? Would you hunt for a reversal or, um, or just let the month and the week end? I would probably just wait for, uh, just at the beginning, this is a very good example, and I'm glad you bring it up, because uh, I was following Tesla at the morning. I choose not to trade today because of the webinar. I, when, I, 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 when I trade, I like to be focused mainly on trading. Good advice. And yeah, that's a very good advice. So Tesla started making a broad information in pre-market and it reached the, the highest point of that broader information just as the, the bell rang. You could have trade, uh, take took the trade to the downside at that exact moment and catch a very, very, very good uh, trade to the downside. It felt hard. I don't know if you followed it, but I would probably do that. I didn't do it because uh, all my focus was in this, in this webinar and I'm glad I'm, I'm here. But uh, yes, I should, you should probably, I would probably have taken that trade. Yesterday was beautiful too. Okay. Um, so just a follow-up question on, the, on Thinkorswim here. So in Thinkorswim, we want to check that the start aggregation at open. Yeah. Okay. And no, then no. a follow-up there. I use another platform in Canada that doesn't have an option to choose the time frame. So the 60 minute candle starts at 10 AM. Will that make a big difference? Uh, well, if, if, no, I, I don't think so. You, you, you can also apply the three universal to, to that uh, kind of uh, candlesticks, but in order to be like aligned with all the channels that we are on, like for Rob, Rob's and and every other groups, then they all uh, tend to start trading at the bottom of the hour. Now, gotcha. but I would say that uh, that would work too. Okay. Okay. Excellent. And then one final question here before we move on: Do you still draw and use trend lines when trading the strat? So, aside from the broadening formation, back from your technical days, do you still ever use any of those trend lines or or drawings at all? I got rid of all technical indicators. Uh, uh, sometimes I used a parabolic stop and reverse on the daily. That was taught to us with, by Rob Smith too. And that's, it's a way of uh, knowing when the momentum of the of a determined stock is going to reverse. Just, that's it. But I, I, I don't use it uh, though a lot. I just look at uh, broader information, um, full time frame continuity, and the actionable signals. The, the, the actionable signals that are inside are the most powerful for me. Uh, it, um, also, they are universal. Okay. All right. Awesome. Now, we do only have 11 minutes left here. So let's go ahead and continue. Any questions that you guys have, I will try to fit as many in at the end, but I want to give Arturo a chance to finish off the presentation here. So okay. I, I will go briefly so to answer more questions, but the, the, this part of applying the strat to options uh, is, is very interesting. It's not like trading stocks. Uh, you always have to focus on the Greeks, the Greeks will mess with your trading a lot. You need to get to know them very well. Theta and Vega uh, in particular. Vega, when you're trading options, always make sure you choose add the money. That is at the current price of the stock, you choose that, that strike. Okay, so I don't know if Expedia is trading at uh, 160, you choose a 160 strike. That should do the best, uh, be, uh, the highest Vega for you. For example, here's Expedia, 
option chain. We got add the money here around here, 160, 162.5. We can see that Vega is higher here at the money. Even when it's a low big uh, Vega for me, for example, if you go way in the money, it starts to lower. And when you go deep out of the money, it starts to lower. So if you choose a high Vega, the less likely you will get crushed by violent move on the stock. Okay, that's a very good recommendation. Okay. <laughs> Back for me. Uh, Delta, highest as possible, highest as you can afford, but always remembering that the best strike to choose is at the money, just for the purpose of trading naked and catching a long, a long run, not waiting for the retracement, okay? Uh, as for theta, I tend to avoid, uh, I use weeklies, but I tend to avoid buying uh, like from Thursday and Friday uh, because people that are holding stock are trying to get rid of insurance for that week. When they tend to sell their contracts, the, the price of your contract is going to lower. So I don't know if that happened to you, but sometimes you're trading in an option contract and it's going it's going up and it's, it's a call and it should get uh, some value but instead of that it starts losing it and you say why 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 the hell is this happening to me i have my my contract and the price of the the stock is going up i have a call and and, and my contract is getting uh, smoked why why the hell that's happening well it's because of theta and because it's theta is messing up with you because you got not you you do not have enough time with that contract and perhaps people are liquidating their positions with the options contract as insurance that's a, that's a good reason okay? okay so as i said strike should be at the money that's my recommendation and avoid the retracement of the the, the price avoid it at all costs you can uh enter the the position while it is going going up then when you, at the very moment your spot is going to retrace, you exit, wait for the retracement and exit and enter again. That, that way you could just, um, make some more money. There are exceptions and I had them too with Tesla. I, spot, I used, um, back in 2019, I spotted a, a very, very strong reversal. I was, uh, I think it was in Ralph's channel. I was just focusing on Tesla and, and, and saw a reversal on the 15er and it was so strong that it kept going through all, all the week. That was a beautiful trade. And obviously you know, you must know when to break that rule. Okay, if you're seeing a lot of actionable signals, uh, a lot of universal truths that are confirming your position, just let it run. It doesn't matter the retracement. The, the contract is going to get a lot of value. And that's a very hard part of trading options, knowing when, when to get the, the option to run a lot. But well, these are uh, some recommendations I can give. And how I take the trade? The same as the strats hold here told in the webinar. You have a national signal here enter at the high point of the hammer. This can also be considered as a momentum hammer. This means the level of aggression of buyers is high because these try to go down and they didn't let it. So it then closed uh, here. The moment this second candlestick surpasses the highest point, you entry and you set your stop at the opening. I always set the stop at the opening. I got stopped a lot. It's a very hard mental game to, to maintain. Yeah, that's the, one of the reasons I'm working out on psychology, because once you got, uh, I don't know, I have gone through seven or 10 days losing short in a row, but even losing short, it gets through your mind and it uh, messes you up. So my strategy here is losing, 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 losing short and then spotting a very good reversal that overrides all those, those losses. 
it has worked for me. I, I, I don't win every day, but when I win, I win a lot. Well, that's exactly why we talk about uh, all the time, whether it's strat or otherwise, we talk about keeping your losses small and letting your winners run. That's yeah. over time. That's how you're going to stay in the black. That's how you're going to remain profitable. That one big loss, that's what wipes people out. That it, it, it's, it's the biggest thing that wipes people out of this game, no matter what strategy you trade. Keep yeah. those losses small. Let those winners run. This is actually a really good diagram here for entry because you have your plan for both sides here. If it doesn't work, if it goes to your stop and you stop out, you know exactly why. You've got a nice little short stop there. You're not really losing a lot of money. But if it, ke if it keeps going, if it goes the way that you hope, look at the size of those green bars above your entry. I mean, if you're trading options, I don't care what the price is. If you're trading options and you're looking at bars like that, you're trading at the money options, there's going to be a lot of room for profit in there. And it, 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 this is great because, again, it's very, very well defined. If it works, it's going to work and you just let it go. Put your feet up. If it doesn't work, stop out and look for another entry. Yeah, sure. Totally. And again, obviously, risk tolerance will depend on your account size, your goals and uh, your personal uh, your personal point of view, right? No, no, we are not all the same. We have different account sizes. And you will, you shall always look for and placing your stop before entering a trade. Always get get those losers to smoke them quickly as you spot them. You don't even have to wait for the stop to be reached. You can get out if you see an actionable signal. That's a point I wanted to, to discuss very briefly. So supposing you, this is at the 15er. You place your trade here. And you start seeing this is going this way with uh, with signals of a shooter, for example, or it goes uh, it, it, well. If it goes three in, in, at this point, I will probably would be stopped out very shortly. But this was shorter, um, a momentum hammer inside momentum hammer. Uh, I, I could possibly put the stop just at the tail, at the, the bottom. Mm -hmm. But you don't need to wait till it gets there. You can exit at the moment you don't like that uh, that trade, and you can do that by looking at lower time frames. Okay, I look at the one hour, but that's very quick. So if you spot a pattern that you don't like, or you spot a, a shooter and that shooter gets confirmed by another candlestick, get out, get out. Don't wait till it gets uh, a very bad situation that you would regret later. Right. All right, we get a, just a really quick question here. Um, do you monitor the chart of the options or just the stock? And then as a follow-up to that, is the stop loss based on the option price or the stock price? Okay. Uh, that was my last slide. And okay, the strat can be applied to option chart for the fiber, the 15 or the 30 and the 60. So we're trading weeklies, so there's no point of having the daily, the weekly, sure. the monthly, right? So you, yes, you can apply it because uh, price discovery works in everything that trades. And I have uh, personally gone through that. Uh, the, the, the difference is that you have the Greeks here, okay? But if you know how the Greeks uh, can be handled, then you can make a lot of money, more with options. Okay, so yes, I have uh, these four time frames for the option, uh, the option charts. I have one screen exclusive for the option chart that I'm trading, another screen for the overall market that uh, was uh, uh, Todd Ostendorf's uh, idea that I stole. <laughs> and uh, another uh, screen that always monitoring all the time frames for Tesla. From the yearly, the quarterly, the monthly, the weekly, the 60, the, uh, I had the four hour two, the, uh, every time frame. And I, um, I'm looking at, at every every time frame. That is hard. So that's uh, one of the reasons I narrowed my universe just to trading Tesla. And yes, always look at the the stock, the stock price movements, but focus on the option charts. 
Gotcha. Okay. All right. And then, and then one more question that's kind of time frame related. Uh, what time frame do you look at when you're actually in a position after you've looked at the other time frames to make your entry choice? So once you're actually in a trade, are you focusing on one or are you moving around to different time frames? I'm just fucking focusing on the 15er. Gotcha. But once the 60 has already uh, closed. Okay. Awesome. And with options, what is your stop loss uh, percent? 2% is too tight since options are more volatile than stocks. Is it 10%? So uh, he, the, the, in other words, what is your stop in terms of the, pr the contract price? If you buy a contract for a dollar, what is your stop price on that? The, the stop price? Well, okay. I get or, or do uh, you base your stop off the underlying asset instead of the actual contract itself? You can do that too, but it can get, uh, it can get very expensive. Yeah, as they already told you. So, so my stop is set at the opening price at, of the previous uh, of the previous candlestick, and I'm not waiting for it to get to the stop. I have another mental like mental stop, just waiting the uh, for, to see if I don't like something. I, I get out. I get out immediately, and I lose a lot. Sure, obviously. I also have a contingency plan in, in the scenario that, uh, I don't know, my computer gets uh, uh, powered off or the lights go away or something like that. I get a contingency plan. So I have my telephone here just prepared to call the broker and say, close, close the position immediately. Those kind of mistakes can cost a lot and should be included in your trading plan. It has worked for me. So, um, bueno, ba back into your question. A 2% stop, yeah, it's very expensive. Um, it's just an example. I, I use them, but I cut them earlier. I don't, I tried not to let the, reach the 2%. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, it w w did you have another slide there? It looks like that last slide just has a thank you on it. Uh, this was the last one. Uh, well, just to finish my slides, there's no reason to believe something can go wrong when quantifiable data is in your favor. In other words, when the truth is by your side. And this is what the strat gives us. All right. Awesome. I got, I got to say, Arturo, thank you very much. This is, this slide sums it up for me. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the comments here that we got, um, this webinar has been extremely helpful and very informative. So thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Uh, I love these slides. Please email me the slide deck. Uh, there were several requests in this presentation already for copies of this. Uh, I think that you did an absolutely great job. Ton tons of, yes, Carlos, the webinar will be available later for rewatching. Uh, and another another congratulations to you, Arturo. Thank you very much. Um, let me see there. I think that there was... One, yeah, nope, that, that was it. So, okay, so great. So, uh, Arturo, thanks again. I know we're a few minutes over. I want to be respectful of everyone's time. Uh, I, I really appreciate everyone for joining us. I appreciate all of the support. Arturo, I appreciate you taking time out of your day and opting not to trade so that you can share this with us. That's really, really appreciated. Oh, it's way better to give back a little of what Rob Hubs gave, gave, gave us instead of being all the time in the market. So, yeah, I, I'm very glad it could help. And I will gladly do it again every time you ask. And thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Much yeah. appreciated. So uh, uh, again, everyone, have a great weekend. Thanks very much. And until next time, happy trading.